Let's go back to the phone lines right now and find a pro bowler, one of the best in the business. Uh, he got paid, or pizzade, as Stuart Scott would say back in the day. Four years, $43 million, richest contract in linebacking history this offseason. He is Bobby Wagner of the 1-2 and two Seattle Seahawks, back on the Rich Eisen Show. How you been, Bobby? I've been good. How you been? I'm, I'm doing great. Thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. So much being made in the paparazzi about the state of your locker room and how Cam Chancellor's holdout may have pulled people in different directions. Would, would that be an accurate description of your locker room, Bobby? Um, I can't necessarily say that. I feel like um, a vast majority of us uh, understand um, there's a business side to this game, and uh, that's the side that we can't control. And uh, I, I personally feel like, you know, um, we're in a business where, you know, we can get cut tomorrow if we're not playing up to par. So, you know, if you're trying to do what's best for your family, take care of your family, I'm always supportive of it. Bobby Wagner joining me here on the program. So uh, what what does Cam's return mean for your team, Bobby? Um, it just, you know, puts another playmaker back on the field. You know, definitely, uh, you know, helps our communication because, uh, you know, we've been playing together for, you know, four years now. And uh, I think, you know, each year we've gotten – you know, more comfortable and more comfortable with, you know, the guys around us. And, uh, you know, when you have a piece missing like that, you're definitely going to feel it. But, you know, now that back, so like, you know, we can get this thing rolling. One of the more fascinating articles I read in the non-playing season, as we do call it in, in the NFL, because we know there's no such thing as an off season, was a story that was recounting the team-building trip that you all took to Hawaii that Cam, Chancellor, and, and Russell Wilson helped put together. What was that like? Bobby, where you and your teammates went overseas to try and get together after that Super Bowl loss? Um, I think it was just a, a fun time, in my my personal opinion. Uh, I think we had an opportunity to kind of get away and, you know, uh, work out together, get back in the mode, and, and uh, just have some fun. And, and like you said, we took some time to kind of um, let out some emotions about that, um, about that loss. And uh, just kind of got to the point where we just need to let it go. We can't let it, you know, linger on into this season. And, um, you know, we have – we're so young in our careers, we have a lot more time to do something about that loss. So that kind of just was our focus um, is to make sure that uh, we never feel that type of hurt again. And with 0-2 being their record to start the season, a lot of people thought that that loss still did linger. Uh, would that be an accurate description right now, Bob? Um, I can't really say that would be accurate decision because whether we were, you know, one and two, zero oh and two, whatever the case may be, you know, they're going to say something. The minute we lose the game, the minute, you know, they see something happen that doesn't look as normal, they're going to, you know, say it's because of Super Bowl or anything like that. So um, it's not really our job to focus on the outside. We just, you know, make sure we take care of everything on the inside and make sure we keep putting up wins. So what what did Pete Carroll say to you prior to the season about this very subject, Bobby? Um, you know, I think a lot of it. I think a lot of it was uh, said after the game that uh, meeting when we came back and kind of just was going to depart our ways. Um, kind of just gave us, you know, his thoughts and ideas about the play and why he did what he did. And after that, when we came back. Um, the focus was just on this year. And, you know, there's nothing that we could do about next last year, nothing that we could change about last year. The only thing we have is this moment and to make it a great one. So I think that's just kind of his mindset. He's always been a positive person. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't expect him to have it any, any other way. Other than just the bottom line in your bank account, what did it mean to get the contract extension that you got, Bobby, for you? Uh, it meant that I was going to be a Seattle Seahawk for, you know, a little bit while longer. I uh, love it here. And, uh, you know, it, it created a sense of security for not only myself and my family um, to know that, you know, I can, I'm going to be sticking around for a little bit while longer and I'm going to be trying to make a lot more tackles in that Seattle Seahawks jersey. Who's the alpha dog on that defense, personality-wise? Who's that guy on your defense? Personality, as far as what? It's the, the leader, the one that, uh, that barks the loudest and, you, and, and has the bite. And, and I, who is that? I know you have I to think, see, but who was that? I think it's a, I think it's a person in, in each in each uh, room. I think I would say I'm the linebackers, Cam is the safety, and Mike B is the D line. So I think you know everybody has some leadership in them, but I say it'll be out of us three. And for for you um, playing this weekend, I don't know if you heard your former teammate Golden Tate saying that everybody knows the plays that the Lions have been calling. 
Uh, uh, what is it like trying to figure out an offense every single week? Because it does seem, you know, Eric, we just had Eric Davis on here, that every team runs only a certain number of plays, and that it certainly it just comes down to execution. Do you? So my question for you is, do you think by Sunday you'll know the Lions plays before they run them, Bobby? Um, I mean, we have to Monday. really dissect the film. I, I, I don't know. I do feel like this is a copycat league, so I feel like if, you know, uh, if we get hurt on a play, uh, last week, the the team that we're playing is going to incorporate that play somehow, some way into their offense. But um, I think you know if you really dissect the film and really watch the film each week, you'll pick up something that will tell you what the play is going to be before it happens. So I think that could be said about a lot of offenses in this league. And pre-snap, what is your role in this stout defense to try and read what what is coming based on the uh, based on the formations that you see on the other side of the line of scrimmage? Well, I just try to make sure everybody gets set up, try to get everybody set up, and then after that, I just try to read my keys as far as, like, um, the fullback, the running back, quarterback, uh, lineman, footwork, uh, hand signals, anything that I can truly pick up on that will give me an edge, um, that will give me an edge on the play so I can be fast. And how have things changed different or, or, or not at all uh, with your new defensive coordinator, uh, Dan Quinn now is in Atlanta. Chris Richards at the controls of the defense, Bobby. Uh, I, I want to say, like, it's pretty, the core is pretty much the same. You know, we, have, we run the same, pretty much the same defense. But, uh, you know, I think each guy, whether it was, you know, Coach Gus, Coach, uh, you know, D.C. and uh, Coach Richard, you know, they favor, you know, one play more than another. Maybe, you know, maybe more so than the other coach doesn't. So that's really, you know, only the adjustment. Maybe one coach likes to run more man. Maybe one coach like to run more zone. Maybe one coach like to blitz more. It's just making that adjustment. But as far as the defense, the defense is pretty much the same. And what is it like playing in front of the 12s under the lights where you only had one such game last year and because it was you earned it? And there was a discussion. I don't know, you know, there's a, or there's a lot of chatter that Seattle did not get a game under the lights on prime time because uh, just, you know, part of the regular schedule because the league saw how uh, difficult it is for a road team to come in and perform under those circumstances. But you got one now coming up on Monday night against the Lions. What What is that like? Can you describe that for me, Bobby? Um, it's just nuts, man. I think as far as the defense, um, you know, they definitely bring a type of energy that creates, you know, havoc for the offense. It's hard for the offense to communicate, hard for them to talk. Uh, I remember one game uh, I was watching or, like, I was a part of, and I really was screaming at the top of my lungs, and, I like, nobody could hear me say anything. So I know, you know, that, like, the offense has to communicate a little bit more, and I know it's hard for them. But I think, you know, when they come out and just create that type of noise and that type of environment, um, it does make it hard for, um, you know, for the opposing offenses. But, I mean, we shouldn't be penalized because we're good at home. You know, I think we should get more home games on uh, on national TV, but, you know, that's not my job. No, I know. It's not mine either, but that was part <laughs> of this t talk. I was like, wow, Seattle only got it because it earned it for the Super Bowl championship to, to start there and didn't get one. And you now you have one coming up on Monday night uh, with a Lions team that's in desperate need of a win. And Bobby, I, pre I appreciate you calling back into this show, and I hope to have you back again real soon whenever you can. It's no problem. You can. I'll be on whenever you need me. You got it. At B Wags with a Z, 54. Bobby Wagner, Seahawks linebacker, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Man, means business. Means business.